As I carefully read through your letter, I am struck by the profound depth of understanding it conveys regarding the ultimate law of life and death, the heritage that Nichiren Daishonin has entrusted to us as his disciples. This teaching, embodied in the five characters of Miyoho Renge Kyo, represents the very essence of existence, transcending the boundaries of life and death to illuminate the true nature of all phenomena. Nichiren's words echo with a clarity that resonates within the very core of our being. The five characters of Miyoho Renge Kyo were transferred from the two Buddhas inside the treasure tower, Shakamuni and Taho, to Bodhisattva Jogyo, carrying on a heritage unbroken since the infinite past. In this profound transmission, we glimpse the timeless, universal truth that has been handed down to us through the ages the ultimate law of life and death. As the great teacher Tian Te stated, you must realize that the interrelated actions and reactions of sentient beings and their environments all manifest the law of simultaneity of cause and effect. This principle, known as the law of life and death, is not merely an abstract concept, but the very fabric of our existence. For as Nichiren reminds us, no phenomena, heaven or earth, yin or yang, the sun and moon, the five planets, or any life condition from hell to Buddhahood are free from birth and death. The great teacher Dengyo further elucidates this truth, declaring, birth and death are the mysterious workings of the life essence. The ultimate reality of life lies in existence and non-existence. In these profound words, we glimpse the transcendent nature of Miyoho Renge Kyo, for it is the very principle that governs the ebb and flow of all existence, from the grandest cosmic phenomena to the most fleeting of our own thoughts and feelings. Nichiren's own words resonate with a profound clarity. Shakyamuni who attained enlightenment countless eons ago, the Lotus Sutra which leads all people to Buddhahood, and we ordinary human beings are in no way different or separate from each other. This realization is the cornerstone of the heritage we have been entrusted to carry, for it is only through the profound understanding that we are inextricably linked to the Buddhas and the Dharma that we can truly embrace the ultimate law of life and death. To chant Miyoho Renge Kyo with this realization is to inherit the ultimate law of life and death, Nichiren declares. To carry on this heritage is the most important task for Nichiren's disciples, and that is precisely what it means to embrace the Lotus Sutra. This unwavering commitment to the propagation of this supreme teaching is the very essence of our practice, for it is through the steadfast chanting of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo that we can unlock the boundless potential of our lives. Indeed, the Lotus Sutra itself promises that a thousand Buddhas will extend their hands to free him from all fear and keep him from falling into evil paths, for those who embrace this teaching with unwavering faith. How can we help but be moved by the inexpressible joy of this profound assurance? For it is a testament to the unbreakable bond that exists between the votaries of the Lotus Sutra and the Buddhas themselves. But as Nichiren reminds us, the opposite is also true. One who does not have faith in the Lotus Sutra will instead find his hands firmly gripped by the guards of hell, just as the Sutra warns, after he dies, he will fall into the hell of incessant suffering. This sobering reality underscores the profound significance of the heritage we have been entrusted to uphold, for it is the very difference between the boundless blessings of enlightenment and the endless torment of the infernal realms. Nichiren's words resound with a profound conviction, my disciples have been able to receive and embrace the Lotus Sutra by virtue of the strong ties they formed with this teaching in their past existences. They are certain to attain Buddhahood in the future. This unshakable faith in the innate potential of his followers is a testament to the depth of his understanding, for he recognizes that the very foundation of our practice is rooted in the timeless, unbroken heritage of Miyoho Renge Kyo. As Nichiren so eloquently states, the heritage of the Lotus Sutra flows within the lives of those who never forsake it in any lifetime whatsoever whether in the past, the present or the future. This profound realization is the touchstone of our practice, for it is only through the unwavering embrace of this ultimate law that we can unlock the boundless blessings that have been entrusted to us. Yet, Nichiren also cautions that, those who disbelieve and slander the Lotus Sutra will, destroy the seeds for becoming a Buddha in this world. Because they cut themselves off from the potential to attain enlightenment, they do not share the ultimate heritage of faith. 
This sobering truth underscores the profound responsibility we bear as inheritors of the Lotus Sutra, for our actions and beliefs have the power to either nurture or extinguish the very seeds of Buddhahood within ourselves and those around us. It is with this deep understanding that Nichiren exhorts us to chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo with one mind, Itai Doshin, transcending all differences among ourselves to become as inseparable as fish in the water in which they swim. For it is only through this profound unity of purpose and faith that we can ensure the unbroken transmission of the ultimate law of life and death, fulfilling the great hope of Kosen Rufu without fail. As Nichiren so eloquently declares, the important point is to carry out your practice confident that Nam Myoho Renge Kyo is the very lifeblood which was transferred from Shakyamuni and Taho to Bodhisattva Jogyo. This unwavering conviction is the hallmark of the true votary, for it is through the steadfast embrace of this profound heritage that we can unlock the boundless blessings of the Lotus Sutra. Indeed, Nichiren reminds us that Myoho Renge Kyo too works in all these ways. It is the cluster of blessings brought by the bodhisattvas of the earth. Just as fire and water, wind and earth, each play their unique role in sustaining the delicate balance of our world, so too does Myoho Renge Kyo manifest its boundless power in myriad ways, nourishing and transforming all beings. And so, as we walk this path of Nichiren's disciples, let us be resolute in our commitment to this ultimate law of life and death. Let us chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo with the fervent prayer that our faith will be steadfast and true, even in the moment of our passing. For it is only through the unwavering embrace of this profound heritage that we can truly manifest the enlightenment that lies dormant within us, transforming the very fabric of our existence. In the annals of Buddhist thought, few teachings have resonated as powerfully as the doctrine of Myoho Renge Kyo, the ultimate law of life and death. Passed down from the Buddha Shakyamuni to his successor Taho Buddha, and then to the Bodhisattva Jogyo, this profound truth has been the wellspring from which generations of Nichiren Buddhists have drawn their spiritual sustenance. As Nichiren Daishonin himself declared, Mayo represents death and Ho represents life. Life and death are the two phases passed through by the entities of the ten worlds, the entities of all sentient beings which embody the law of cause and effect. Renge. This concept of the simultaneity of life and death, of existence and non-existence, is the very foundation upon which the ultimate law rests. The great philosopher Tian Tai expounded on this further, stating, the emergence of all things is the manifestation of their intrinsic nature, and their extinction, the withdrawal of that nature into the state of latency. In other words, birth and death are not separate but two facets of the same underlying reality. Shakyamuni and Taho Buddhas, the Lotus Sutra, and we ordinary beings are all part of this seamless tapestry of existence. It is this profound realization that imbues the chanting of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo with such transformative power. As Nichiren Daishonin wrote, to chant Myoho Renge Kyo with this realization is to inherit the ultimate law of life and death. To carry on this heritage is the most important task for Nichiren's disciples, and that is precisely what it means to embrace the Lotus Sutra. For those who embrace this truth with unwavering faith, the Sutra's promise is truly awe-inspiring. After his death, a thousand Buddhas will extend their hands to free him from all fear and keep him from falling into evil paths. What greater comfort can there be than the knowledge that legions of enlightened beings will guide us through the transition from this life to the next? Conversely, those who disbelieve and slander the Lotus Sutra are cut off from this wellspring of spiritual sustenance. As Nichiren warns, because they cut themselves off from the potential to attain enlightenment, they do not share the ultimate heritage of faith. Without this connection to the profound truths of the Lotus Sutra, the very seeds for becoming a Buddha in this world are destroyed. It is, therefore, the sacred duty of Nichiren's disciples to safeguard this heritage, to chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo with unwavering conviction, and to spread this ultimate law of life and death to all who will listen. As Nichiren himself exhorted, when you are so united, even the great hope for Kosen Rufu can be fulfilled without fail. For those who embrace this teaching, the transformation is nothing short of miraculous. 
As the Daishonin wrote, earthly desires are enlightenment and the sufferings of life and death are nirvana. By embodying the ultimate law, one transcends the illusory divisions between life and death, joy and sorrow, and attains a state of profound inner peace and harmony. This, then, is the heritage that Nichiren Buddhists have been entrusted to uphold, a legacy that stretches back to the very dawn of the Buddha's enlightenment, and forward to the endless cycles of birth and death that all beings must traverse. To walk this path is to align oneself with the fundamental rhythms of the universe itself, and to become a living embodiment of the ultimate law of life and death.